Welcome to everybody. Uh, we're super excited for this first uh, presentation of collaborations of the Omoja Fellowship to take place. Uh, on behalf of the Siegel Family Foundation and the BMW Foundation, uh, a, a welcome from the heart, really. Um, Luisa and I, we're representing the BMW Foundation today, and we want to just take a brief moment to introduce to you the concept of the Omoja Fellowship. Um, and then let you know what to expect in this next hour that we're really excited for. Louisa, do you want to go ahead? Sure, with big pleasure. Indeed, we started this journey around four months ago and we invited uh, six leaders from different places on the continent, from the north, the east and the south, to come together and collaborate on something that's uh, really relevant for the future of the continent. Um, and what happened over those four months is that the ideas of those uh, fellows intertwined and their communities linked and some good things happened that we will uh, hear about today. 
So really, just to give you um, the, the, the big intention of the fellowship was to make it as free as possible. We said we're going to choose people that we believe in because they have love and passion for what they do. And we want to couple them and just see what emerges from these four months of, of co-creation. And so what we're going to do today is to hear from two of those pairs. Um, Brian and Emna, who worked together over the past couple of months, and Leila and Carmen, who did the same. And we're going to start with Brian and Emna, who I'm going to warmly invite to briefly introduce themselves and then let us know what your collaboration has been, is, and will be on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, the BMW Foundation and the Siegel Family Foundation. It was an amazing opportunity um, to meet Brian and to, uh, to exchange about our project. I run a, an artistic space in Tunis called Central Tunis, and uh, I will let Brian introduce himself. So I'm Brian, I'm from Victoria Yards. Hello, everyone. Um, Victoria Yards is a niche development in South Africa. I love doing niche unusual properties and to be given this opportunity to work with somebody that I think is uh, similarly driven and passionate about um, uplifting societies and uh, property development. Um, I, I'm very excited to be part of this initiative. Thank you. I will now share my screen to show you the small presentation we cooked with Brian, just to show you our dreams. <laughs> so we are all we are both driven by the dream of neighborhood regeneration. Uh, on my side, as I told you, I run this uh, artistic space in the heart of Tunis. Tunis is a very beautiful city, but it also it is also very derelict and. Uh, and the soul of it, its inhabitants are really dying for regeneration and for artistic activities to revive the soul and the, and the hope for the city. So back uh, in April last year, last year we organized uh, an artistic exhibition. It was a big exhibition about Tunis Centreville. We really wanted to ask the people, what do you think of Tunis? How do you feel about it? What is going wrong here? So we had many artists who gave us our, their vision on Tunis and many people came and it was a very beautiful moment. And uh, during this, uh, this uh, artistic exhibition, another dreamer came to the exhibition and said, I wanna be part of this. I also have a big project. He is a developer. He has a big land to develop in Tunis and it's actually in the heart of the city. And he told us, I need creatives. I need artists to work with me on this area to be developed, uh, to make it an artistic space and a place where full of opportunities. So this is the place, it's a huge place and it's actually really near to the old port of Tunis. The place, you, the photo that you see here used to be the port of Tunis. So all the, all the ships were coming here and arriving here. And now this is what you see. So this is where Brian and I met through the Responsible Leaders Network because Brian had the same dream and I thought he would be an amazing partner to, uh, to help us regenerate this area. We will now show you what he did with Victoria Yards to show you how we were inspired by his action. Project, maybe Brian, you want to tell us more about this project? 
Uh, sure. So, um, you know, the, one of the first words that Emna mentioned was dereliction. And I absolutely love dereliction because it opens up a world of opportunity um, where people don't see through it. They just see the, the mess. And I, um, I love the, uh, the challenge of changing that mess into something viable. And that's regenerative, regenerative, sorry, and, um, and helps uh, change the landscape of the city. So um, I love these old spaces in cities because there is such incredible opportunity. And, you know, I was, I've been chatting to Emna for quite a while now about um, Tunis and central Tunis and not having the opportunity to go because of, um, of, of the COVID. And, you know, get, to do my job properly, I need to get my feet onto the ground. And the closest I could get to do that was to go flying on this kind of satellite Google images thing or Google Earth. And I started getting very excited because um, the, the area that we're talking about is um, it's very close to some fairly important landmarks, I would, I would think, in Tunis, like the clock tower and um, the old port. But um, there's quite a lot of life in the neighborhood uh, with flower sellers and fruit sellers and whatever, which just makes it that much more um, that much more possible. Um, but these are very, very difficult um, things to get off the ground. And without somebody like Emna at the coal front in the town, in the city, they I would say that, that they're impossible. So Emna's position here as the driver is going to be the absolute, the most important thing to, to getting this initiative off the ground. And then, of course, um, it's really like herding cats because you have to get, you know, the property developers all kind of agreeing, which is normally, uh, th that's, uh, that doesn't really normally work because they're all thinking about money. They're not thinking about um, uh, change for the, you know, change for social change. They're not, they're just thinking about kind of lining their pockets. So, so um, this, uh, uh, we've planned to meet next week uh, next month, sorry, in Tunis. Um, I think it's going to kick off just after um, another BMW Foundation event in South Africa, and uh, where I'll be joining, hopefully, I'll be joining Emne in Jerba on a beautiful island. I've seen the most extraordinary photographs of Jerba, never visited, but, um, and that will be the introduction to, I think, a lot of the artists and people that will be getting involved and can be getting involved in this project. And then I will go to the physical site where Emna and I and Mr. Hentati, who we met on one of the videos, will um, start putting our heads together and see what we can turn, uh, or see what we can turn, see what we can make possible and happen. Um, yeah, so I've, I, I must also mention, I've just got back from um, Italy yesterday morning on, um, I would say a far more difficult project on a little island called Taranto. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of, it scared me, which is good um, because as I say, these things are, are not for sissies. They really take a lot of dedication, drive and passion, which I absolutely believe Emna has. So that's it. I'm gonna now share with you some pictures of how artists started to be inspired already by the projects. And uh, so this is the Hela Lemin. She's also part of the BMW uh, Responsible Leaders Network. And she uh, kindly drew us for us these pictures of all the buildings getting animated by the idea of these projects. So these are the soul of the buildings. Let's start to talk about our project, Brian. And this is the place what we're gonna, that we're gonna totally change. Because in Tunis, um, we, we, we have this opportunity and this chance to have, as you say, the developer that believes in our dreams. So it's, uh, it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for, for us to collaborate on, uh, on a project that is at the heart of the city that can help regenerate uh, Tunis and, uh, and show more all the, its creative soul. And what I'm really happy about is really to collaborate with you on this project and uh, to together re 
participate in linking more North Africa and South Africa, because I'm convinced that uh, when we will realize these projects, a lot of collaboration will, uh, will arise. And uh, I'm super happy of this. And uh, it's all about who you meet and, uh, and the souls that you meet. And, uh, and thank you really for this opportunity, all of you to, uh, for this project that is going to, to emerge. Yeah, I think it's an extraordinary, an extraordinary gesture by BMW Foundation to, to do this kind of thing, because if it hadn't been for you, there are lots of people that just wouldn't have had the opportunities to meet and also to dream and make those dreams hopefully realities. So, uh, so, so looking forward to next month and getting on the ground and doing this, um, this um, operation, this project. Thank you both so, so much. Um, if people, uh, some of the 69, 70 people that are in this room would like to get in touch with you, um, can they do so? And maybe how? Uh, just as a quick follow-up before we jump to the next pair. Um, I'll leave my email. Um, I'm writing it in now. Um, so please, if you want to ask any questions or you want to get hold of me, please go ahead. I'm available. Um, I'm, also on WhatsApp. I'm also on WhatsApp. I can add that as well if you like. Uh, Same here. I'm re I just wrote my email in the chat. I will be happy to, to connect with an anyone who is uh, interested. Thank you both so, so much. Um, we're continuing. Uh, time is limited in the session and with two such wonderful projects, we also want to give space to Leila and Carmen and actually the additional guests that they brought. Um, I just want to invite you all to really enjoy the diversity of things that came out of this. We heard about neighborhood regeneration and now delving into an entirely different direction. Over to you, Leila and Carmen. Hi everyone, thank you so much, Clara. Uh, this is a, such a good uh, introduction to uh, the world, everyone who's watching. I'm just following on the chat box and seeing that people are joining from all corners of uh, Africa. So yes, I am here with my new uh, friend. And then as you mentioned, we, we were connected with two strangers who are now friends. And we, have, we are bringing to this platform a tribe of other people, 20 people with us. We are representing a voice of those who didn't know each other and now who have con con connected and developed a community. So my name is Carmen Ibikira. I am from Burundi. I, I reside in Rwanda and currently I'm joining this call from Gabon. So to say that I'm really there's no border when it comes to connection. So to my friend, Leila. <laughs> Hello everyone, and uh, I'm Leila Bengesum. Um, I was uh, happy to collaborate with my friend Carmen on this project. And uh, we're going to share with you an exciting journey that we went through in the last two, three months. Yes, so our Moja Fellowship Program really helped us to really connect and make e-communities. And we emphasize on the virtual because everything happened. Really, there was no physical. We didn't move from our homes or our community where we were. Everything was done virtually. So for us, we were guided by our passion for youth, our passion for connections, and our passion for building community. Personally, I have been on this journey for years. I, I am a mentor. I, I mentor young people. And then I'm always connected to young people in whatever shape and form. So the three, the two of us realized actually when we were introducing ourselves, that we have so many things in common. So we designed our own program, which was like six weeks program to connect virtually and then help young people we have selected in our community to create and share information as well as learn from each other. And we were inspired by the fact that we wanted to create future leaders that are each of our, our participants who didn't know each other would be able to have something they would take home with and then say they were part of this journey. So that was kind of like our guiding uh, principles, peer-to-peer -peer connection, community building, inspiring future leaders, which were our core value, Leila. 
So um, the, the pandemic has created the new reality and it's, it's people keep on saying things when, when things go back, when things go back to normal, when things go back to normal. But, uh, but everything, there are, there are new habits that we just need to adapt to. It's a new reality. Um, I have a modest business in, uh, in tourism and I can see a big shift in trends and the way that people think of, of uh, vacations, of how they, they spend their time. And also for young people, it's important to, to learn that they need to adapt to new realities and make friends across borders and see things in different ways. So our intervention was very simple. We connected young people, young girls, boys, black and white, from five cities, Bujumbura, Kigali, Kampara, Nairobi, and Tunis. So the age was between 13 and 16. And then I can assure you one thing, they were probably better equipped than we were. They were able to quickly put together their groups on WhatsApp, communicate, they were savvy on technology, and then me and Leila were learning throughout the whole process. So this was a very interesting kind of a journey because when the BMW and the Tico Family Foundation put us together, it was only Leila and Carmen. But now we have 15 and 16 people who came together because of this from different backgrounds, different languages, different historical, and anything which was created in the six weeks, you're gonna see for yourself what we're able to do. So here we are. So we took some pictures virtually, of course. We had a group of people from uh, Bur Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya. And then as you can see on these pictures, these are like the simple representation, Greg, Laurel, Liz, Paradi, and then Sonia, and other people who were here. So Leila, would you like to tell us how you were able to connect your group? Because that was also another part of the learning. So we started inviting people uh, from uh, the community of my guest house uh, in the Medina of Tunis. It's the historical urban quarter. And uh, young people came uh, to participate, but then some did not have uh, mobile phones. Uh, some the parents were not sure about mobile phones. Uh, some did not have internet access. Uh, so finally, they all uh, came together in a, in, in a co-working space, Dar al Harka. Uh, and th big thanks to Sunia, who managed them. Um, and uh, even after the project was uh, kind of accomplished, they still wanted to get together and they started a reading club. Uh, they started going to museums together and planning things. So uh, we, we started two communities, an e-community, online community, but also uh, neighbors started planning things together. Thank you. So what did we do? Five weeks. We packed a lot in five weeks. So we allowed all the participants in our group to really come up with their own challenge. So we wanted to spark a change and the change was not gonna be driven by me and Leila. We were only there to facilitate, to be the convener, to pull the space, organize these meetings and make sure that they follow through. Well, we were so surprised. They were all, even though but different background, different languages, age and gender, they had something in common. They were really concerned about issues. Me and Leila, we were surprised to hear that a climate change is something that keeps them awake at night. They talk about education, access to education, and then also migration. All of those things were important to them, and then they wanted to put together solutions. So at the end of six weeks, they came up with presentation in groups, presented the problem, and then what alternative solutions and possible solutions. Me and Leila we were all happy to see that we put together a group, a community, e-community, and then a physical community in Tunis. Leila. Uh, yeah, so it was a journey. It's, uh, it's, and it's great to see um, in the eyes of young people that they start, um, start seeing the neighborhood as a, as a worldwide, uh, um, connected uh, environment. They can have friends from anywhere, uh, but also young people are positive. They don't have uh, stereotypes like we old people do. <laughs> so they are more open to make friends. Uh, and uh, they have understood that with the, the little 
magical instrument in their hands. They can, there's no borders. Uh, they they can make friends, they can make business, they can make networks. And uh, they, they, also, they also understood um, uh, understood new techniques to create the jobs of the future and what what tools are there to create new opportunities for themselves and their communities. What did I learn? I learned a lot. I had already been doing what I would call my usual dinner, which was physical, get people together and then face to face. But now I'm exploring putting together a virtual coffee for interpersonal connections and then co-creating that space for learning. Because I think, as we mentioned, me and Leila, we learned that the old ways of doing things, some of them will never come back. So we have to adapt and then we have to create with what we have. So that kind of innovative way allows us, me and Leila, to think how we can be intentional about our actions. So it gives us great pleasure. And I'll say one of my key highlights was to see how each participant was on time. They put efforts. They went to the extra, making extra efforts to really make it happen. So we were sharing our specific values and goals, and it was a, such a rewarding journey. And I'm grateful that our, this opportunity was given two people meeting and now putting it together, they are different communities. So what are we going next? Even though we did it six weeks, we realized there was so much we could do. And remember when we were doing this was in the middle of the, we call the summertime, all our participants are students, so they go to school. Some went back to school, some are in boarding schools, some cannot have the time we used to have. So what we did was like put together a, a, a momentum. What do we build from here? So they all made a commitment to serve in one way or another. Guess what? They came up with their own initiative on the things they are going to do and then how they're going to do it. Some volunteer, some prepare to do something for the community. And I think have you heard from Leila, the group in Tunis now who didn't know each other, they are going to museum, they are doing activities on the weekend, they are doing a reading book. The same is gonna continue. And then we encourage them that the change doesn't happen when you are at our age. We told them that actually the best way to start anything is now. So we prepare them to really be responsible, to take action and really to tap into their talent. And we were able to kind of like spark some kind of perspectives, a new fresh way of looking at the world. There is no reason why their mindset cannot be rewired to really fit into the future or where they are going. So, and then guess what as well? They were able to help each other. Some came with very, very good technical skills. Some were very eloquent speakers. Others were good at doing design and then they were really, really good at whatever. And then they all share the knowledge. So our intention, Mina and Leila, is to continue nurturing and growing this community. And then by December, we plan to have them back again, maybe for one or two weeks. And then each year have now our fellowship which will be starting from two uh, people and then get it going. And then hopefully we'll be invited in 12 months to tell you how far we are, what have we accomplished. So that's what we want to share. Leila? So I, I think also it was amazing for the young people to, um, to see friendship with no borders, to, um, to, to, to understand that uh, you don't have to be of the same uh, community to be friends. Uh, you can open up and be more accepting. Uh, a teenager is a teenager is a teenager anywhere on earth, and uh, they can be friends um, and, and do good things together. Um, so it, it, has, it has helped them be more empathetic, uh, more um, comprehensive, but accepting also um, to make friendships uh, beyond borders. So we are delighted to have today, uh, not only you heard from our reflection, I think it's important that you hear from one of our participants. We would have wanted to have two or three on this uh, specific call. Unfortunately, some of them are in school. So as you can imagine, this particular time, all of them are in schools. But we have a special guest. So over to you, Leila, to introduce yes. who is going to be representing everyone. 
Sonia, is Wissan with us? Hello. Um, congratulations to you, uh, Leila and Carmen Nigira. I'm Burundian and I'm happy to listen to Carmen how, uh, what you, you are doing, impact you. that you make uh, in that country. Uh, my question Thank is- Thank you um, so much. Cynthia, someone... Cynthia, I think we, we, we still have one presentation and we come back to your question. We have one person who's about to present. Two minutes. Okay. If we can let Wissal give her talk and then we have a two minute video and then uh, we can have your question if you don't mind. Thank so Wissal, I would like to welcome Wissal. Wissal, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, hello all. Uh, my name is Wissal and uh, I live uh, in, uh, Tunis, uh, in Tunis, the country, uh, and I am uh, 16 years old. And how was the experience, Wissal? What did you do in this project? Uh, okay, I think the project is uh, very interesting and uh, nice. I love uh, the project. Uh, very much. Thank you. Uh, anything else? And I think, yes, and I think um, it's uh, very nice uh, to uh, to talk uh, uh, with uh, many friends from another countries and uh, and know their uh, their foods, uh, their culture. Uh, their uh, monument, mm -hmm. uh, it's very nice. Thank you so much, Wissal. Uh, Carmen, if you would like to unshare, maybe I can share the video. Yes. Uh, so, so the young people, they work together to develop a little video, which I will share right now. Uh, if I can. Sorry, I'm trying to share the video, but I cannot find it. <laughs> Maybe we should take a question from, there was a lady who was asked a question. Maybe this is the perfect time as Leila is trying to solve mm -hmm. her uh, challenge with the computer. Yes. Will... yes. Apologies to everyone. I'm trying to share my screen. Let me try again. There was a person who raised her hand and then uh, from Burundi, would you like to go ahead and ask? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Carmen. My question was, uh, if someone needs uh, to join you from Burundi uh, and uh, he, don't, he don't speak English, do you yes. prepare, uh, can he uh, join you with, uh, in French or in a, which language? Thank you. That's a good question. As you heard for Wissal, Wissal speaks French and Arabic and English. And then what we did, we were able to put them into groups. So they were those were very uh, conversant and very fluent in English. So we put them in one group. We had one Kenyan, we had the lady from Uganda and two young men from Rwanda. So what we did was to put them together in groups. Leila and us, we speak more than three or five languages uh, among ourselves. So we're able to do it together. So to answer your question, yes, we are building this community. We are starting from scratch. So please come and join us. And then if you have any recommendation, we'll be more than happy to share our contact here. And then that could be done. No problem. Thank Can you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna start the video and let me know if the sound doesn't work. J'ai 13 ans, 
J'habite à Tunis. Good morning, my name is Romeo, I'm 17 and I'm from Kigali, Rwanda. Hi, my name is Paradi, I'm from Rwanda. Moi c'est Karel, je vous parle du Burundi, plus exactement à Bujumbura. Hi, my name is Wissan. Uh, I study uh, in a Tunisian country. Bonjour, je m'appelle Kassim Saïd, j'ai 13 ans. Hi everyone, my name is Charles Ngweni. I'm 16 years old and I live in Bujumbura, Burundi. My name is Liz, um, I'm a Rwandan. Bonjour, je m'appelle Ayoub Ashi, j'ai 15 ans, j'habite à la Médina de Tunis. J'aime le dessin et j'aime la musique qui est pop. J'aime le chien et j'aime le travail du streaming et j'aime aller, aller à la plage. So, um, my hobbies are, I play guitar, I, I really love guitar, I'm into music a lot, and I like to read books as well. But on top of that, I also skate a little bit, do a little bit of biking as well, very like outdoor. But I also read books, um, and I kind of like that as well. I like going on walks in the evening with my sister. I have many things uh, how I love, like uh, artists such as uh, painting, cinema, theater. I love uh, reading books too. I like sports because sport is very important, uh, such uh, tennis and football. And uh, I like to travel too and learn history about other countries. This is nice and fantastic. And uh, that's it. J'aime bien pratiquer du sport. Ça m'aide à me concentrer. En plus de ça, j'aime bien jouer aux jeux vidéo, écouter de la musique. Ensuite, lire des articles, quelques articles. J'aime le violon. J'ai tourné beaucoup de films en Tunisie. J'aime le cinéma. A few things that I enjoy doing. I enjoy playing rugby. I enjoy swimming. I enjoy reading books. And I enjoy listening to music. Yeah, that's all. Et j'aime aussi participer de projets. Je suis fier de faire une connaissance avec nos amis africains. Nice to meet you all and uh, the study is back so good luck for all and good study. I have two brothers, also I'm the first one. Yeah, thank you. I like to think that I bring a creative aspect to the project and I'm super excited to see what we have um, to cover. But so far it's been going great. I just wanted to say thank you for having me and thank you for giving me this opportunity. And yeah, I'm super glad I got to participate, super glad I got to make new friends, and super glad I got to meet new people as well. I really appreciate you having me here. Thank you. Merci. Merci à tous. So each, voilà. each young person registered, recorded themselves. <laughs> et voilà, ça c'était moi et Leila. That was our project. And we are so happy to see that we created communities, new friends, and then we're going to continue. This is not just a one-off. We intend to make it happen. And then every year, make sure that it continue to co collaborate. Thank you so much, Missal, and so is Sonia, and then for the opportunity given. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Hope to welcome you in Tunisia soon. <laughs> Thanks to both of you. This video is uh, heart melting for sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, I do think that we have 10 minutes in case there are any questions um, to either of the Omoja fellow pairs. Feel free to just unmute yourself um, and, and ask a question or write in the chat whatever you feel whatever feels best. Also, I think this is quite a bilingual group. So if you want to ask a question in French rather than English, sure. please feel free. Apple? Isaac? Apple? Yes. Good afternoon. Good my afternoon. Question is, yes, my question is whether somebody can join you to, to, to work with you because I'm a young teacher in training and soon completing. So I want to work with you really. So I don't know if I can be able to join you. That's the question. Thank you.
Did you hear me? Yes, we heard you. Thank you, Isaac. I'm assuming you're referring to the fellowship program for youth that Leila and Carmen just presented? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Can I pass that yeah. uh, question over to you? Yes, I think for us, our, our intention was to create communities. We started with my own community in this African community community and Leila and her own community. And the age is between 13 and 16, because we think that's the perfect age to spark a change, to start asking them how they, they can collaborate. So our intention is, first of all, to allow the lack of result, the lack of uh, needs, the lack of, for them to grow organically their community. So first of all, I think for us, our intention, let's just make sure that they are the ones to create this community. Leila and I, will continue to support them. So maybe this could be an idea for you, Isaac, to create something similar in your own community. And then maybe we'll merge another time. For us, I think the community will be built by the lack of result, the new friends they're going to bring on board and then extend the network. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Isaac. A similar question just came up by Gordon in the chat who asked how they can, uh, how they could link up with your youth focused uh, groups. Um, I think you just answered that, Carmen. So I think the idea is definitely to build a larger network. Um, so just get in touch with them and see on a case to case basis how that might make sense. Um, Ivan, Mugabe Ivan, you also raised your hand. Do you want to ask your question? All right, my mind is really a simple one. Uh, I just want to know from uh, from Carmen, uh, what are some of the challenges you have encountered in the course of your project? Are there any? Thank you. Yes, Ivan, that's a very good question. Oh, Leila, we met so many challenges. I think for us, when we started this conversation, we didn't even know what to do because creating a virtual community, I think we didn't know what we're getting ourselves into. So what was number one challenge? How do you connect young people across five countries speaking different languages? And then how do you choose them? We did a snowballing effect. So I contacted my neighbor who, what her name is Paradis, and Paradis was able to bring another friend at her school. And then we were trying to connect to the dots. The same for Leila, she was using the community and bringing children who go to different schools. So for us, how do we put them together? How can they really make it happen was number one challenge. And last for me was the challenge for me and Leila, we had to think harder. We had to really plan to make sure that they are engaged. So our PowerPoint presentation had to be fun. We had to use a lot of music, colors. And I'm glad Leila, she's, uh, she's in the artistic world. She was very, very useful. Leila, any tip which was the hardest one for you? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, me and Carmen, uh, I think I think when uh, Clara and Louise put us together, they, they thought that we had a lot of things in common, but uh, we finally decided to work with teenagers. And teenagers are not the, the easiest community to attract. So with every week, we plan a meeting and I think, hmm, will they come? <laughs> but they kept and on they showing show up, up on time. <laughs> and they still do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions? I see Tadeus is asking, what is your plan on replicating this to other or more countries? I think May and Leila, our intention, first of all, when we started, let's keep the 16, 15 young people connected. So already they are teenagers, they are in schools, they speak different languages, different interests and different hobbies. So we already managed to glue them together. So now our expectation and then our hope is that they will continue themselves bringing new friends into this new community. And Leila and I continue to support them through the process. So what we do, and then I'm glad we have Sonia here on the call who has been very, very instrumental. It's to get them to do the video, which they did together. They put the content together, help us to do it. And we were able to put it together for them. 
Second is the WhatsApp group they created. Our intention is that by December, they will have now like come up with something they work together on and then continue building this relationship because it's a, it's one brick at a time. We are not saying that we are getting it. We have managed it. We are learning as we go. There's one more thing I'd like to add. It's uh, the importance of alternative education. I think I think our the education system. Well, if I speak of Tunisia, at least it's uh, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not as dynamic as it should be to adapt to to new technologies and new tools. And uh, we often talk about schools not providing uh, enough uh, education for soft skills development. And uh, I think this, this projects like this can really create, I mean, can really de develop young people's soft skills, but also openness, uh, empathy. And uh, I think those are crucial tools, digital know-how, uh, building e-communities, and these are um, crucial uh, know-hows uh, to succeed in, in, uh, in our future. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think with that, um, I suggest we close the session so you all can get a breather before hopping into the next Future Summit experience. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, if you want to get in touch, the email addresses are there. Um, and we look forward to staying in touch. And for our Umoja fellows, we uh, are, I would say, more than delighted to know that they're collaborations and friendships continue. Bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, bye.